Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. Before we begin, I have a message from one of our friends from Iceland, Katla, and she was explaining to me the different pronunciations of the different names of the Norse gods, so I will do my best to get them correct. Today I will be your guide through history as we take a look at Othin's Mysterious Ravens. Moving right along, mythology tells us one thing while archaeology tells us another. Who were the ravens of Othin? What purpose did they serve? What mystical power did the ravens have? Today we will answer these questions as we take a look at these wondrous birds that served the king of the gods. In Norse mythology, a pair of ravens named Hugin and Munin, their names meant thought and mind or memory. Othin uses them to fly all over the world and bring him back information. Othin gave the ravens the ability to speak so they could keep him abreast of the events on Midgard. Hugin and Munin are attested in the Poetic Edda, which was compiled in the 13th century. Their role as Odin's messengers were very popular in the folklore of the day. Each day, Odin would send out the ravens at dawn. They were expected to fly all around the world and return by dinner time. This resulted in the best way for Odin to be best kept in form. Of course, being so well informed, this added to Odin's allure as he was praised as the wisest and all-knowing of the gods. Throughout the Eddas, many stories were told of the adventures of Hugin and Munin. What of this pair of ravens? Besides the gift of speech, did they have any distinguishing characteristics? Actually, no. The Eddas may claim that Hugin and Munin did not stand out in any way. Perhaps Odin believed it would impede them from accomplishing their daily tasks. Odin also cared for his two ravens and constantly worried for them. A cult eventually built up around these incredible ravens, and to many, Odin was praised as the raven god. Scholars have linked Odin's relationship with Hugin and Munin to shamanic practice. One school of thought is that Odin's ravens were actually a personification of the god's intellectual powers. However, this can only be assumed from the names of Hugin and Munin themselves. The idea connects Hugin and Munin to the Norse concept of Fugia, which is the concept of three characteristics, shape-shifting abilities, good fortune, and the guardian spirit. This idea is that the ghostly double of a man, his Haminya, was the ability to appear in the form of an animal. It is interesting to point out that in the Hiliand, an old Saxon adaptation of the New Testament from the 9th century, differs from the New Testament in that it, the explicit reference is made to a dove sitting on the shoulder of Christ. It is the opinion of many scholars that by placing the powerful white dove not just above Christ but on his right shoulder, the Helion is proclaiming Christ as the son of the all-ruler. He is also the new Odin. The deliberate image of Christ triumphantly astride the land with a magnificent bird on his shoulders is an image intended to calm the fears and longings of those who mourn the loss of Odin and who want to return to the old religion's symbols and ways. With this image, Christ becomes a Germanic god, one into whose ears the spirit of the Almighty whispers. A different school of thought brings up the issue of Odin's loss of an eye. In this sense, the All-Father God lacked depth perception. However, Odin compensated for this weakness by both his ravens and his wolves. In this sense, the relationship symbolized the ravens as integral to Odin's eyes, mind, and memory, while his wolves, Giri and Feiki, as providers of meat and nourishment. Other scholars connect Huyin and Munin with the wider raven symbolism in the Germanic world. This is evident in the English Chronicles and the Scandinavian Sagas. Picture, if you will, a banner which was woven into it, a method that allowed it when it fluttered in the wind to appear as the raven depicted upon the flag as it was beating its wings. Lastly, let's take a look at what the archaeological record makes claim of Odin and his ravens. On a Vendel era helmet features a figure who is clearly Odin riding a horse. He is also holding a spear and a shield, and as a serpent attacks, two birds come to his aid. Archaeologists have also uncovered a pair of Germanic Iron Age-shaped birds from a dig in northern Denmark. The birds depicted are clearly Hugin and Munin. It is also important to point out, by the shapes of their beaks, they are clearly ravens. Tapestry fragments have also been found 
that the decorations show Odin riding a covered wagon accompanied by his ever too faithful ravens. These are just a few examples discovered by archaeologists depicting how the people of that time saw Odin and his relationship with both Hugin and Munin. This brings us to the end of Odin's Mysterious Ravens. Please like and subscribe to Traveler's Tales and don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. Until we meet again at the crossroads of folklore and fact, Cartistos.